This story is a couple years old now, but back then a friend of mine who just recently got into web development asked me, why do I get this is undefined error in the handler function of a React component Bruh. when the function gets called? I quickly realized that my friend was lacking some base JavaScript knowledge about scopes. In this video I will try to explain and hopefully convince some of you why it's so important not to rush with frameworks, just like my friend did. And I will give some actual examples on what you need to master before learning a framework. Let's get started. JavaScript frameworks are everywhere. Angular, React, Vue.js, Svelte, XJS and backend frameworks like Express and Happy are used by millions of companies worldwide and pretty much every job posting includes at least one of them. And this gives beginner developers a strong FOMO, fear of missing out. People jump onto the framework train trying to learn one framework after another or simply learn the next cool thing on the market, which I actually understand because as developers we always want to keep up with trends. And it's not a secret that learning one of those frameworks will make your CV more appealing to hiring companies or can actually help you build your next web application for your startup. Wait, what the fuck? Eh? Huh? That's, that's it? It only does hot dogs? No, and a not hot dog. But stop for a second and think, will simply learning React will let you use its full potential if you haven't mastered the JavaScript itself first? The short answer, as you might have guessed, is no. All the frameworks that we saw before are essentially tools that speed up your development and help you with common operations such as DOM manipulation, looping through elements and handling the business logic. For example, take conditional rendering. React lets you show different pieces of information based on the boolean value easily, while in vanilla.js you would need a couple more lines of code. Probably this is not the best example, but you get the idea. If you literally go through the whole React website, take courses and learn the React itself alone, it still does not make you a strong and knowledgeable JS developer at all. Because you probably know what to do, but don't know why and how actually everything works under the hood of your framework. All of us programmers sometimes have bad days and sometimes really bad ones as this guy who deleted the production database on his first day at work. And on those bad days it's really common to hear things like, I hate this app when you get strange and unexpected errors. And then you start googling and trying to find why the error was happening in the first place. And this is when a strong knowledge of the language itself can save you a lot of time when you're working with a framework. Before we dive into the specifics of what the minimum is that you need before learning a framework, make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already. It would be really cool to see each other's growth as developers with the time. You can see mine here on YouTube and I hopefully can see yours by connecting in the comment section below. And also keep in mind that I'm making this video based on my experience and experience of people that I know, so don't take it as a single source of truth. Max from Academine, for example, has a different opinion on this exact topic. And if you have your opinion as well, feel free to share it with us. HTML. I want to quickly address HTML specifically for front-end developers. JavaScript on the front-end is primarily for DOM manipulation, which means you need to have a pretty good understanding of the semantic HTML, different types of elements such as images, iframes, specific form elements, and learn which steps browsers actually take to render and paint the content on your screen. The engine parsing event loop cold stack. Diving deep into the JavaScript engine such as V8 from Google Chrome is not only interesting for nerdy ones who like to explore, but also help you have a bigger picture and understand why certain things in JavaScript are the way they are. You can learn how browsers parse the code, how the event loop functions, because I'm pretty sure it's gonna be mind-blowing to find out that there's a never-ending event loop inside JavaScript that works together with the cold stack. Then learn what garbage collection is so that you can avoid memory leaks whenever possible. Scope. Everything that's being executed in JavaScript 
happens inside specific scopes and it's there for security. Basically to make sure that variables can be accessed from only certain areas of the program, which helps us avoid unintended modifications to those variables. And a scope can be a global one that native browser objects such as a window, document, string, array, and so on refer to, or any other variable that is not inside a function or a block. A local one, also known as function scope, which locks the scope of variables inside this function only to itself. Or a block scope that acts similar to the function scope as long as you use const or let instead of var when declaring variables. Knowing these different types of scopes will once again allow you to easily determine and predict what the output will be in different scenarios when using a framework. This is directly related to the problem that my friend had that I mentioned in the beginning of this video. Inheritance. JavaScript is a multi-paradigm language, which is a mixture of procedural, functional and object-oriented programming. The latter is built on top of a concept called inheritance, and in JavaScript, inheritance is achieved by using the prototype object. As soon as you learn how it works, you'll be able to understand why everything is basically an object in JavaScript, and you'll understand what's going on under the hood of ES6 classes that we also have in React and Angular. Classes, constructors and so on are merely a syntactic sugar on top of inheritance, so it's definitely worth digging deeper. Async and sync. Basically the word asynchronous means not happening at the same time. And since by default JavaScript likes to execute everything in a sequence one by one, sometimes we need to make use of this, I will try to spell it correctly, asynchronousness. For example, when fetching a data from a server or setting a timeout. In those cases, you obviously don't want to hold the execution until the response arrives. And by that, asynchronousness plays a huge role in frameworks. Error handling. If you already have some programming experience, you probably know why catching errors and handling them in the right way is so important. It doesn't matter if you're on the front end or the back end, as long as you have some kind of an API with the dynamic response, you will have to make sure that you reject and resolve them or try and catch the errored ones in the right way. On the front end, as we already said, it can be an API response, while on the back end, you will actually have to handle the client requests. ES6 and everything after that. The reason why learning ES6 is so important is because the modern versions of every popular framework has incorporated it into its architecture. Angular literally uses classes and constructors. React is full of anonymous arrow functions, template literals and object structuring when passing props to child components. Express.js on the other hand uses async await in the controller methods in order to handle requests. So basically being familiar with ES6 will make your learning curve of a framework much smaller. After all the points that we just went through, I just want to remind you that if you have a strong understanding of them, learning a new framework will usually take you a week or two week at most, and sometimes even a weekend, you will be able to easily predict why functions behave different in certain scenarios, why you get some specific errors, and of course how to solve them. My friend has probably figured out that she needs to bind this to into the right context in React in order to avoid the problem that she had. Hope this video was helpful, and if you liked it, make sure you turn the like button blue or white depending on your browser settings. Have a nice rest of the day, and I will see you in the next one.